For more than 20 years, fire managers and emergency personnel serving in the Prescott Basin have performed annual interagency drills in an effort to train for fire and all hazard events that would threaten their communities. These simulations have been based on probable scenarios for the area and are a core element in their preparedness planning. An 80-acre fire has developed in the Prescott National Forest. The fire is burning in Chaparral on rolling topography. It is progressing east towards the Prescott Ranch community. Two air tankers have been ordered. The estimated time of arrival is one hour. As a Type 3 incident management team, your assignment is to develop a plan that will keep the public safe and meet environmental objectives. Heavy ash, uh, real heavy smoke, air attack, can't see yeah, the fire front. front. They are indicating that the fire is going to be entering the subdivision within an hour. Our uh, two kids are in the house, but that's key kids. These, these four first, they got about a half an hour. We sat around the table and talked about what, what happens next. And I think the most important thing is, you know, we're eating lunch together, people are coming together year after year. You know, this has been happening for 20 or 25 years, and the amount of information that, that these individual groups bring is, is fantastic. And we've seen it happen on the Indian Fire and the Lane 2 Fire and the Cherry Fire, and we've got to practice it. So, uh, you know, it's, it amazes me year after year. This whole thing started, uh, I believe it was 1984, and what caused it was a fire that was right on the border of the city of Prescott at the time I was working with the Forest Service. Um, we showed up, an engine from the city of Prescott showed up, an engine from Central Yaupai Fire District showed up. Um, what happened was uh, we were going to join hose lays together. Instead of run, each one of us running the hose lay around the fire, we were going to try to coordinate that. Through the coordination and trying to get this together, we found our hoses didn't match up, our fittings didn't match up. So instead of wanting running one hose layer on the fire, we ended up running two, which didn't make a whole lot of sense to us. So shortly after that fire was over with, we sat down, a few of us, and said, we have got to fix this. It was real easy to sell the idea early on in the mid-80s that we need to start drilling together, um, bringing our resources together, so that when we had an incident, uh, it's going to be that much smoother, and everybody's going to know their jobs, everybody's going to know where to fit in. Once we got the managers involved and, and made them understand that we had a problem, then things really started to work together. We started training uh, daily, weekly, uh, monthly. We got the money we needed to start buying the equipment that we needed to be able to work together. Um, it's a two-day drill. Um, on the 26th, there will be a table tap exercise for the Type 3 incident management team we have developed. Um, at the developed. same time, on the 26th, we'll have our tactical stuff happening for uh, the guys on the ground. So we'll have everything from fire shelter, um, practice fire shelter deployments, to um, hose lays, to structure protection. And we like to kind of do that every year because we have new people coming through. So, you know, we want to make sure that everybody's, you know, getting a little bit of the, the starter stuff, the basic stuff, and then some more um, technical stuff that involve maybe uh, a little bit more of a thought process, a little bit more of a skill set to, to accomplish the drill. 
Definitely confidence. They get to see, you know, maybe somebody that has been doing it a few years, get to see how they do it, builds their confidence. They learn stuff from these people, maybe a better technique. Everybody's walking away with a new skill set, a new slideshow, something that helps them if they ever get caught in a situation that they can apply that to it. Well, the value is definitely will show us our, our weaknesses or, you know, those places that, that may not be weak, but we need to develop and work on a little bit more. Uh, communications, you know, that's always the number one issue that we, we see on any incident. We identify that early on so that when the incidents occur, we've dealt with it and it's not going to be or it should not be a problem. When we drill together, we practice together, we know each other. We basically have no fences. There are no boundaries. If the help is needed, the help arrives. When that fire happened, we had drilled on that for years and years and years. The way it all fell together, uh, it was like, this is probably the tenth time we fought this fire, only this time it's real flames. It's, it's not the drill anymore. Well, everybody knew exactly what they were supposed to do. Um, there was no hesitation when, when the fire bell rang. All our engines were either in city fire stations or centrally out by fire stations. People move to Prescott because they want to be in the forest. Mm -hmm. And when you're going to their property and telling them, folks, we need to deal with this issue, uh, there is going to be another Indian fire. Only we may not be so lucky the next time. The homeowners associations used to fight us. Now they stand beside us. It reassures the, the people in our community that we are working together with all the agencies we have here. Um, so when something bad does happen, that we are, we can, we have the capabilities of taking care of that. You know, when we started, I don't know we had really any kind of direction where we were going. We just knew we had a problem. We had a lack of training, and we had a huge problem surrounding the city of Prescott, and we needed some help. And so, getting back to the partnership, that's where it became crucial that. We became real close partners with the Forest Service, with the state fire, with the, the, all the other fire agencies, Central Yelpai Fire District, uh, Chino Valley, um, so that we could uh, start developing um, our capabilities as a whole and also our capabilities as far as our resources go. We had that new fire center out there and it didn't make sense to take your initial attack engines and put them on the other side of town where their response time is, is going to be a half hour to an hour to get to where the fire is going to be that's out in the forest. We also implemented a form of a position task book for all of our personnel that um, from recruit firefighter up to chief officer we built and within the, each one of those task books was a certain level of wildland firefighting training. In, in those task books. We went from having limited experience to where we have personnel who are now operations section chiefs on incident management teams. We, we have made some big differences here, and I know it can happen other places. There's no doubt in my mind. And you don't have to make laws to force people to do these things. You just got to keep moving and moving, and eventually they understand and, and you can make it happen. Um, I thought it was a great um, opportunity to learn what all the different resources do in an incident like this. Um, from a law enforcement standpoint, um, there's, a, uh, there's not a lot specified as to what law enforcement is supposed to do, but something like this kind of gives us a little bit better idea of what are we supposed to do and what are some of the things that we might come up against um, that we need a plan for. Well, I, I think it's a really good uh, good effort in the way of cooperation and, and really a need here within the community. Uh, it's a very small community. We've got a lot of ownership in the community from the forest level uh, down through the state, county, city level, and it's a necessity here. You know, it's a it's a very urban uh, community, 
and the threat of wildfire is evident every summer. Well, it, it prepares us. You know, there's a couple different components to it. One of it is the, the planning component. So we've got a, an operating guide within the, the group here in the Interagency Fire and Emergency Management Group that we use as a template. And basically what we're doing is we're uh, ground truth in our, our template or our guide to ensure that we're ready if, uh, if need be. As far as the, the interagency cooperation, I think it's at the, the optimal level here right now. You know, and, and so we're challenged with pushing it even, even farther along, getting that to be more of a realistic uh, yeah, cooperation in, in, on a, a real emergency event. So. We, we can study the, uh, the incident command system um, and read about it in books or whatever, but until you actually put it in place and see what all the different pieces of the puzzle do, um, y y you don't really understand what's going on. Um, and this helps us to better identify what our role is and how do we interact with those other groups. And as far as the community at large, um, I, I spoke to one lady on the phone and explained to her that if, if we didn't do these practice drills, then we wouldn't be set up in a, in a situation where they actually really needed us. And so we're going to be better prepared to actually be able to go out and protect the public that we serve.